I first discovered you uh, thanks to an open letter that you authored to Justice Kennedy over at uh, Public Discourse. Uh, Dear Justice Kennedy, an open letter from the child of a loving gay parent. And then uh, a few weeks later, you authored a postscript um, also to Justice Kennedy, um, arguing that same-sex marriage isn't good for kids. Um, and uh, these uh, closely mirror in many ways the amicus brief that you submitted before the court in Obergefell, uh, one of 147 amicus briefs that was filed in this case. Tell us um, why. Why did you author um, these letters uh, and your amicus? What I hope to do is to bring the child's perspective um, I feel like Dr. Sullins and many others have done a good job of giving us the statistics, the research, the why behind it. Um, but I wanted to bring what I hoped was the stories of kids and what they want. And I feel like if most of us are honest, we can say that as children, whatever our upbringing was, we probably would like to have had a full relationship with both our mother and father. And that's actually what kids still want. It's hard because what, who we hear from now in this debate are adults. And we're starting to hear more voices of adult children who have gay parents um, speaking out saying, I, w I support a child's natural right to be in relationship with both their mother and father because I didn't get that. There's six of us who authored briefs and submitted it to the Supreme Court for this case who have gay parents. Um, I did continue to have a relationship with my father and I'm really the only one of the f six of us who didn't have that totally cut off. Um, you know, I, I started writing about this mainly because, especially after our president evolved on the issue, it felt like there was a sea change within media where now that they had the president, they could play the bigot card. And now um, they could really turn the heat up on those that supported traditional marriage. And so I started blogging. Um, you know, I said, okay, well, I guess if uh, all it takes to be a bigot is to oppose gay marriage, then I guess I am one. So I started a blog called Ask the Bigot. And uh, the point was to show that there are reasons to support traditional marriage that don't stem from phobia, animus, ignorance, or indoctrination, which seem to be the accusations. Um, I'm not a truth teller. I'm much more of a grace giver. So it took me a long time to get into this fight. And when I did so, uh, I did it anonymously because I didn't want the fallout of me speaking about this to extend to any family members that um, might be affected. I was mainly hearing religious arguments from pro-traditional marriage advocates, and I believe that this absolutely has to be uh, a statistical, secular, compelling case for the welfare of children. So that's what I focus on when I blog. Um, and the only reason I'm submitting a case, a, a brief in this case is because I was outed on my blog. Um, there were some gay marriage supporters who felt that I was not just wrong, I was evil. And I needed to be outed in the name of accountability. And so they back searched some of my photos, found my IP address, found out who my husband was, started to kind of issue some threats on his blog, uh, published all the names and addresses of the home community leaders at my church on their blogs, sort of like go get them. Absolutely intimidation tactics. And so, um, I came out and said, okay, yeah, my name is Katie and this is who I am. And thankfully, that situation rectified and I was able to make peace with the blogger who posted that information and he took it down. And he is my friend and um, he will come to my house someday if he ever visits this country and have dinner at my noisy table. Um, but because I am outed, I now can write legal briefs under my own name. So that's, that's kind of the backstory as to why I'm even doing this. 